Hello, welcome everyone. Good evening. I am Dr. Aman Khera. I am co-founder of Care for Parents. Thank you all for joining in today. Uh, today is a very important topic of discussion which we have taken out is about uh, management of emergencies at home. This is a very, very important thing and I'm happy that you people have joined and I hope more people join in this because you see what happens is that we all know that a health emergency can happen anytime. An emergency never comes with a prior information. We all know that. And we also know that an emergency never happens in a hospital setting. Emergency will only happen when you are out of the hospital, when you are at home, when you are at friend's place or when you are on the, in, in the marketplace or somewhere out. And it can happen to anybody. It never comes with a prior information, as I said. So it is very important to, first of all, understand and identify that, yes, this situation or this feeling I am getting or maybe my friend is getting or my family member is getting can lead to an emergency. This is very important. The first important thing is identification. That what is the symptom, what is the sign that we, we are observing can be of an emergency. The second important thing is what should we do at that time? Because we as doctors, we always, you know, we have in our experience, we have realized and seen that if some corrective action, basic action, some basic thing is done at home before the help can arrive or maybe the patient or the person is able to reach hospital, many a times it is found that that can help in, you know, treating that particular person. So first, identify an emergency. Second, what is to be done? Now, in our society, or rather everywhere, you know, sometimes certain myths are also there. False facts. Dood pila diya, pani pila do, ye kar do. Now, these things, in certain state of emergencies, if followed, can sometimes, you know, be more detrimental than helpful. So, again, it's very important to know that what are these myths, how we, we should we do them or not. And I'm sure many people have doubts in their minds as we'll, as we'll be talking, more and more things, thoughts will come in your mind and we'll be happy if you, you know, interact and you raise these questions and we'll be uh, happy to answer them. So early identification, what to do, what not to do, so that by the time we are able to reach the hospital or a health service, a health, a health person, healthcare person reaches you, some action should be done so that the person, uh, this person can be saved or a problem can be sorted. Now, going forward, before we start the discussion, I want to tell you about two very important things. One, the first important thing is the importance of the golden hour. Now, what is a golden hour? The golden hour is the first one hour, which during which if an action is taken, we have found as doctors that the condition of the person can be, the patient can be saved or maybe, you know, the, the results of the treatment are very good. So it is very, very essential that if you suspect an emergency, do not waste time. The first one hour is very, very crucial. So please keep that in mind, everybody, that always take advantage of the golden hour and either bring the person to the hospital immediately or take some corrective action. The second very important thing which I'm saying, and I would like everybody to be very, listen very carefully about, is that everyone should know which is your nearest hospital. Because, and, and, and keep a note of that, their contact numbers. It is very, very important because when there is an emergency, sometimes you are not able to think properly what to do, where to go, how to do. So it is essential that the emergency helpline number of your nearest hospital should be in a very, easily approachable place so that if there's an emergency at home to anybody, you should be able to, you should immediately know, yes, we have to contact this hospital or we have to immediately take the car and, and go. Ambulance service is a very, very important thing. And today uh, I would like that I am informing everybody that if you download our Care for Parents app, at a touch of a button, we are able to send you ambulance within 30 minutes in 500 cities of the country. So. And you will, you will have an easy access to ambulance services. So these two, three things are very, very important that you should always keep in mind. 
the nearest hospital you should always know an access to ambulance service you should always have so today to discuss all this we have invited dr deepak gupta dr deepak gupta is the head of department of emergency services of venkateshwara hospital venkateshwara hospital is one of the largest multi specialty super specialty hospitals in delhi in dwarka area a very prominent hospital and dr deepak gupta has be has got a immense uh, experience in managing emergency then he has been associated with the emergency services for a very very long time thank you dr deepak for joining uh, we are really grateful that you have joined us today taken out the time from the most crucial part of the hospital which is the emergency uh, emergency ward to you know uh, talk to us and answer some of our queries thank you so much dr khera uh, i am dr deepak um, मैं वेंकटेश्वर हॉस्पिटल और डॉक्टर खेरा की ऑर्गेनाइजेशन की तरफ से आप सबको आज आमंत्रित करता हूं चर्चा के लिए आज का विषय बहुत अच्छा है और आप लोगों ने सब ने इमरजेंसी एट होम और ये सब्जेक्ट ऐसा है जो हम डे टू डे सर्विस में सबको जरूरत होती है तो इस चर्चा के लिए इससे जितने भी हमारे श्रोता हैं दर्शक हैं उन सबको आज वेंकटेश्वर हॉस्पिटल की तरफ से डॉक्टर खेरा की ऑर्गेनाइजेशन की तरफ से हम आपका स्वागत करते हैं और चर्चा को शुरू करते हैं सर Just start from the common emergencies which we yes, have yes. day to day life. This is cardiac emergency. Like cardiac emergencies are, you know, somebody has a chest pain or shortness of breath. There are two major uh, symptoms which we face in a very common scenario. So suppose somebody has a chest pain, and the chest pain is typically in the breast bone side, central chest pain, with sweating, gabbard. We should not ignore that symptoms. First of all, second. the upper abdomen pain usually people think about it is a gaseous pain it means a gas so it is very dif uh, uh, difficult to let, let them understand it is a cardiac problem so most of the time you crucial as you said golden hour concept so golden hour concept is a one hour which we get maximum benefit for the treatment so suppose somebody have a upper abdomen pain please don't ignore that pain and it is not relieved within 10 15 minutes everyone should call the ambulance or help the uh, any help if suppose somebody alone at home most of the time we don't ever never would also in daytime so call the ambulance or near the hospital services they can provide you pre hospital care so the symptoms which are very important to understand in cardiac issues sudden onset of the shortness of breath chest pain shoulder pain even the jaw pain even the suppose somebody have a uneasiness which is not describing properly proper symptom gabrad isko hum bolte hain gabrad for uneasiness sweating please call ambulance immediately second point do not panic there is no need to get panic because panic again make you tachycardia heart rate increase hoga aapka then again anxiety symptom will worse if there is anxiety now second thing patient suppose a known case of coronary artery disease or heart disease so he should take immediately because we uh, in our house nowadays after corona era we all have the spo2 monitor at home bp automatic bp machine immediately check the bp check the spo2 and take your regular medication which you are taking regular like in chest pain somebody have coronary artery disease heart disease they can take sorbitate one tablet of sorbitate Uh, sublingually and call the ambulance and make them propped up in position that is the first thing which we about chest pain in second shortness of breath shortness of breath again is a symptom of the cardiac or pulmonary issues like cardiac suppose somebody have a low ejection fraction means heart function is very poor 25% 30% he might get exertional symptom like breathlessness in that scenario patient suppose have uh, nebulized nebulization at home they can start nebulization patient to be propped up in position 45 degree to 90 degree position suppose we have in, we have in our house is the uh, oxygen concentrated they can contact with connect with the oxygen also and do not panic first important is do not panic call your relatives call your neighborhood and call the ambulance immediately Dr. 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 Dr.
that when a person is having a uh, chest pain and he already knows that he has had uh, you know a heart problem in the past and as you mentioned very rightly that you know we should uh, take sorbitrate we put the sorbitrate below the tongue and uh, that sometimes even causes headache also but that we should remember some people some doctors advocate that you should take uh, some tablets of discrin or aspirin uh, at that time so, so what do you, what do you say about that i think discrin uh, in the regular follow up patient of the cardiac uh, cardiac problem they have no issue to take discrin but sometimes what happen patient may having uh, parallel stroke also is about somebody have is feeling uh, symptoms of mixture of the cardiac and stroke features that time discipline is a disastrous until okay. the patient see this can suppose okay. have a sweating and ghabrat he might have a stroke which is hemorrhagic stroke that is not a good idea to take discipline at that time otherwise regular medication which we are taking has to be taken judiciously that time okay my suggestion of that taking discipline is little bit risky in a different scenario whether the is a cardiac issue or is a stroke issue. that is the only uh, limitation taking discipline that time so so this is very important you know for everyone to know that if there is a first of all what as dr deepak has said that you know a cardiac problem need not only be a chest pain it can be pain and discomfort in the stomach also upper upper side part of stomach also it can even go to the pain can go to the jaw also it can go in the back also it may be behind the chest bone also so this is very important so one you should we should realize that these symptoms can be because of a heart problem and yes immediately we have to call an ambulance and of course take a sorbitrate and you know uh, uh, discrin may or may not be required that depends upon if the stroke symptoms are there or not and uh, as far as the doctor uh, deepak was saying that regarding the breathlessness i think he was saying for the shortness of the breath so uh, can you please tell what uh, nebulization should be done and uh, how how that is uh, done in shortness of breath most of the time shortness of breath in during the winter season or it is very uh, you know the this uh, then say uh, during rainy season the moisture is there so copd patient asthmatic patient they are more prone to develop all this kind of allergies or the exaggeration of the symptoms and suppose we don't know whether it is a cardiac or it is a pulmonary issue so if the the most of the patient which is a chronic copd patient asthma patient they usually have nebulizer at home so till the ambulance arrive or the primary pre hospital care arrive at your door you should start some nebulization like salbutamol or ipravent or duolin or and you can do decord also they are uh, the steroids which is the inhalation which don't give any side much side effect only they act on the pulmonary so we sometimes there myth that we steroid can inhalation le liya that is harmful it's not harmful because it absorb in the lung and remove from their part only they don't enter into the blood stream so it is very helpful that time suppose we have a oximeter at home as per to we see the oxygen is 90 or 92 we can add the uh, oxygen concentrator if we have and start nebulization that time and make them the proper position that is the best time uh, this is the best way to early start treatment so this is very right you know uh, like what dr deepak has said that uh, corona has taught us to keep certain basic instruments equipments at home like a pulse oximeter which we never used to even think about and the oxygen concentrator so if we have that we can, that's an added advantage one thing which he said which everyone should remember is the position of the person so that he should not be lying down straight away he should be in a, a lot sort of a sitting or a partly sitting uh, partly sitting posture because that helps the person to breathe properly and you know uh, help to relieve the symptoms so this is a very very important thing that people do not know don't lie down either be sitting or be in a semi sitting position you know where you are at a 45 degree angle where, uh, if you are having a, a nebulizer or something which it really helps and really eases the breathing second thing also uh, some of the patient are on uh, intermittent therapy of bipap which is non invasive ventilators at home yes. so they can start that also during this symptoms and they really may get help from the nivp or cpap bipap therapy so yes that's also very important because bipap is not present at everybody's house but people who have them, they can use it cpap patient if they have if they have their own they're doing the intermittent therapy they can start the therapy and the the important thing is do not panic and call for help is very important in every aspect you call for help 
otherwise you will not get the proper care yes of course you know the, you have to read the hospital immediately the idea of the uh, initial management is just to provide the first aid at home and then we have to rush to the hospital second sir we would like to emphasize on the uh, cerebral vascular accident which we call stroke so how do you identify stroke the important thing we most of the time we ignore our symptoms are aise hi ho raha hai theek ho jayega so there are few symptoms which we uh, which we have to understand what is a stroke a stroke is a basically is a like cardiac attack is a brain attack deficiency of the blood supply or inappropriate supply of the brain vessels to the brain tissue is a cerebral vascular accident cerebral vascular accident it might be ischemic there is a clot in the brain vessels or it may be some trauma to the uh, brain vessel due to the hypertension or some balloon in the brain they might burst out and they might lead to the hemorrhage in the brain in that scenario body give your initial some symptom which can identify and recognize in the right time which is called fast as for the facial deviation suppose somebody has facial deviation ki mera muh thoda teda lag raha hai and arm drip there is a weakness in the arm thoda pakadne mein koi kamzori lag raha hai mujhe is a weakness in the limb is a numbness in the limb of perioral numbness मुंह के चारों तरफ आपको नमनेस लग रहा है लग रहा है, देन स्पीच समबडी हैव स्लर्ड स्पीच कि आवाज में थोड़ा लखड़ापन हो रहा है मुझे एंड नॉट एबल टू फ्रेस वर्ड प्रॉपरली प्रॉपर प्रोनाउंसिएशन एंड सडन ऑन सब डिजीनेस डिजीनेस मीन्स सम वर्ड टाइगा आई एम फीलिंग इम्बैलेंस बाय स्टैंडिंग ऑन दिटिंग पोजिशन सडनली वर्ड टाई गो और some sort of uh, vision disturbance like visual disturbance uh, you know distortion of image sudden onset of vision loss this is all are may be stroke they may be stroke symptoms so please don't ignore all these symptoms but there other also reason also uh, for the same like hypoglycemia is one of the differential diagnosis in the scenario so better in the home do not panic with the diabetic patient or even the not diabetic If you have a glucometer at home, please check your sugar level. If sugar level is okay and the symptom is persist, then immediately you call for the help. Because, as rightly said, Doctor Kira, the golden hour concept. Golden hour is the time is a time is muscle. So every second, every second is important, especially in the stroke. Uh, stroke every one minute, the million of cells can be destroyed if we not reach emergency and the proper time. So golden hour concept. The patient, the moment you identify your symptom, you call for the help and reach to the hospital. Better to uh, if you have opportunity to go a better, bigger hospital where the CT scan facility or MNC, uh, the advanced emergency care available. The the person should approach that hospital. The, the choice of the hospital is to be definitely where we have all facilities like CT scan, ECG, and all point of care tests be available immediately. so time can be saved and nowadays the lot of medication are available which cause clot blusters if somebody after doing ct scan or mri we found there is a stroke which is called the thrombus is causing the stroke not the bleed we have one medication which is called clot bluster which can imme immediately administered during the window period the window period around 3 to 4.5 hours the the medication if given a the proper time and proper administration the mortality and morbidity morbidity means the chances of recovery is very fast and the the residual uh, jo deficit it may come down in very very speed in very lower manner so the identification is stroke and and again repeated please don't take dyspnea in suspicion in suspicion of stroke Discipline can be taken after the CT scan. Once the doctor say there is no bleed, that is the best way to take a discipline. Otherwise, please avoid to take discipline. It may sometimes be disastrous to the body, spite of doing the uh, benefit of patient. Second, headache. Most of the time, people used to take discipline in the severe headache. This is not a good idea. So please don't take discipline in any manner. Please take prestamol, 650 milligram or 500 milligram according to your body weight. That is the most safest medication.
taken at the home and easily available open counter sale in the pharmacy. So identification is stroke. And the moment you identify, then even the hypoglycemia, suppose the symptom is coming not of the stroke, but it's a hypoglycemia. You take some sugar pouch and you feel better, but report to emergency because this event can again reoccur after one hour or two hours. You'll end up with the same problem. And we even the hypoglycemia or stroke can come together also. So don't think if you have a hypoglycemia, don't have a stroke. Both things can come simultaneously also. So pre-hospital care, inform the ambulance, call the um, emergency team and report to the emergency department nearest. I think I think this is a very, very important thing what Dr. Deepak has said because you know, stroke is nowadays very, very common. People are having high blood pressure and that it brings about the uh, many people land up with a stroke. And how to identify, I think Dr. Deepak has said very, has explained that, you know, if you are having a face deviating or you are not able to speak properly, slurring of speech, you know, people, people are able to present these symptoms and the weakness of any part of the body, please take it very seriously and rush to the hospital because that you could be having a stroke. And like what Dr. Deepak has said about hypoglycemia, hypoglycemia, you know, when the sugar level falls, mostly seen in diabetic people, that when the sugar level suddenly falls, when they have taken the medication, not eaten, and then they tend to, you know, uh, become unconscious and they fall down. So that one, immediately you should give some sugar. And of course, don't think that a person is fine if he gets up. Go to the hospital, get a checkup done, because sometimes, as like Dr. Deepak has said, that stroke and the hypoglycemia can happen together. These are, uh, you know, these two, three things that we have discussed so far about heart disease and the stroke are very common and very, you know, this can cause a lot of problems. They can cause a uh, lot of, as I could say, morbidity means it can cause a lot of damage to the body. So we have to be very, very careful and take action as soon as possible. Also, what about, uh, you know, uh, uh, situations where patient may have, uh, you know, a lot of male people, especially sometimes they have a problem in passing urine because when they have a prostate, which is enlarged and they land up in a problem and they before are able to pass urine, what should be done at home? Before going to this urine incontinence, I would like to emphasize on uh, the cerebral vascular stroke. Okay, sorry. Uh, uh, so uh, there is a term called transient ischemic stroke. It is a stroke which is a very, very small, very minute stroke, can come and go within a second or within a minute or within 20 minutes. So sometimes what happened, the symptoms came, sudden onset of vision loss and patient may recover within 30 seconds or one within one minute. So it's very important to identify that also because if we do not act on the proper time and proper duration, that the larger stroke, intensity of the stroke, it can within three months or two months, the high probability is this can patient can have full 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 blown stroke. So identify the TIA is very important. They should not ignore. Suppose there's they have some symptom and immediately they recover. So in that scenario also they should go to hospital immediately and do whatever the doctors advise, scanning or whatever blood test and start with therapy immediately. That is very important because TIA most of the time we, we, we ignore TIA most of the time. And they come later on after, you know, within a three months period, they come with a full stroke. Another very important thing, you know, because again, like what Dr. Deepak said, that when a problem is coming, they always give a warning sign. So this is a very important warning sign of an impending or a coming stroke. Sir, uh, you are asking about next topic is. Uh, uh, urine incontinence. Urine, urine retention or maybe when there's a difficulty passing urine. Difficulty passing urine, uh, most of the, uh, you know, there are a lot of reasons for that. Passing urine, uh, most of the time they have uh, prostate problem, in, especially in male community. We have, there are few symptoms which can, can identify in the face, increase in frequency, hesitation, dribbling of the urine then after the uh, incomplete feeling of you know evacuation of the bladder is not properly uh, empty and their chances of they, they are symptoms are there then these are the symptoms of prostate you can be prostate hyperplasia benign prostate hyperplasia is come both and you need a proper workup for that because it is a very difficult for uh, 
anybody to understand what is going on because this very uncomfortable feeling going repeatedly to the washroom and difficult to pass urine there better investigation be required to understand whether this the prostate problem is a benign or we need a further eva evaluation for the disease so we go to your urologist doctor there better investigation was required and we can start that test the most common cause of dribbling of urine agitation so most of the reasons are from the prostate problem which is called benign prostate hyperplasia we need to be evaluated for that. so so if there is a problem in the passing urine then you know uh, you have to go to the hospital and if there is a severe pain and not able to pass at all then uh, you have to go to the hospital because they put a catheter but yes there are you know you can try at home also sometime by you know going to the washroom running of the water and maybe sometime that is able to relieve it may be because of a renal colic your you know bladder bladder stone or kidney stone yeah lower case side of the ureter stone they may lead to similar problem it can happen to any age or any 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 you can say any gender so renal colic is one of the another reason to have this urinary retention also now so one very important very very common thing which especially the elderly people have and when they are at home is you know they fall yes so now what should be done when a person falls whether he hits his head or maybe he injures his arm what do you suggest what do you advise should be done immediately before they are able to uh, take to the hospital before uh, coming to the hospital and somebody fall at home the fall is a two types of fall it is a uh, one fall is you know is we call uh, fall because uh, be sudden fall because uh, without any you know without any getting awareness we are going to fall this is called synco patient fall because of the cardiac issue or neurological issue second fall is because of the some slippery and they have imbalance due to some you know um we call to call uh, not able to pro walk properly and they fall so there are two categories fall is in the two categories one is the medical one is the accidental fall when you have accidental fall then you should not move your limb ask for help try to stabilize your limb whatever available at home suppose you have some gatta or some you know some kind of uh, splint some kind of splint any any hard thing which can be immobilize the limb that time and basically that to be done there only and you can take some medication if pain is there definitely so your safest medication in elderly we go to the paracetamol which we already talk about 650 mg is the safest we can take immediately before calling for pre hospital care most of the time we what we saw Uh, in elderly people, they have intertrochanter fracture is very common. Pelvic fractures are very common. The reason of the uh, falls in elderly are because they have some some kind of medication. Suppose they are taking some anti angiolytics, some medication which make you drowsy, like somebody in alpha blocker for this you know postural hypertension. They get up from the bed and suddenly they have a giddiness and they fall. so that kind of fall can be lead to any any fracture or may may have a head injury also so that has to be taken care by at home with the primary if the patient is conscious there were limb injuries immediately they have to be immobilize the limb call for the help take a paracetamol and call the ambulance suppose sudden thing which is not related to the accident fall they have just got up and suddenly drop it is called drop attack so in that scenario first thing we have to check sugar level sugar is okay if the sugar is low then most probably they are uh, hypoglycemic effect can be taken care by at home only and then call the ambulance or call for the help suppose this fall is not because accidental or not because of the hypoglycemia it is a serious issue in that scenario you have to call ambulance and shift to the hospital they don't need to give anything from um, orally may might be unconscious semi conscious so don't do anything without without any guidance and proper care 
Okay. So, uh, when do we suppose a person uh, falls down? What should be the you know symptom that he should look for to rule out any serious internal injury, head injury? Head injury, sir. Internal head injury. Suppose somebody had a fall and you know immediately they have some loss of consciousness. Suppose patient had fall and they have a loss of consciousness. They not remember what. How do I fall? They not remember. How long they been in this position? Then first this loss of consciousness. Second, after the after the fall, they have a severe headache, and they have them some you know limb weakness. They're not able to lift their hand or you know, leg. They have some kind of you know, slurred speech and vomiting. Vomiting again is a very important symptom after the because the once the the brain, uh, the somebody had a fall and there's some clot in the brain. They might lead to pressure in the brain, which lead to sensation, nausea, vomiting. Some patient had the abnormal body movement, which we call seizures, epilepsy. So we have to very careful these symptoms: loss of consciousness, vomiting, and the you know abnormal body movement like shaking of the hand, on deviation mouth, tongue bite. These are the symptoms, and sometimes they have an ENT bleed. They had some bleed from the ear, nasal bleed are there, tongue bleed because of the abnormal movement, tongue had bite during the abnormal movements. These are the very important warning signs which we have, and drowsiness. Suppose they don't have all these symptoms, they are the classical symptom which mentioned in the books we already practiced, Dr. Kera. But sometimes they have a very you know fake symptom like you know uh, alter sensorium. And they have uh, loss of appetite. They're not behaving properly. Their behavior is changing. That might be a chronic problem. They pay, especially patients who are on antiplatelet. Antiplatelet means the antithrombotic therapy like aspirin, dyspirin, clopidogrel, brillanta. They are antiplatelet drug which is used in cardiac patient or known case of the cerebral vascular accident, CV patients. So. In that, in that particular, especially the sick of all replacement, who has one, they are in some blood thinners like acetone, warfarin. They are more prone to all this head trauma than you can say traumatic brain injury. In chronic alcoholic patient, cirrhosis patient, their body coagulation profile is deteriorated and deranged. They are more prone to develop all these head injuries. This is this is very important. You know, like what Doctor Deepak is saying. Uh, that you know, especially in old, the elderly people, in the senior citizens, what happens is that, आज चोट लगा, you fall down today, you don't feel anything today, but after two, three days, four days, you suddenly start seeing that you know they are having severe headache, vomiting, and all all the symptoms. What Dr. Deepak has said that sudden, you know, you start feeling abnormal, or you observe the other person is feeling abnormal. So there is always a possibility that the person is developing some form of a internal head injury and should be immediately reported to the hospital. This so is a important thing, and a lot of people come in the emergency with that. Yeah, sometimes they have alter uh, alter sensorium, irrelevant talk, very psychotic behavior. All of a sudden, because maybe there's a head injury element also. Sometimes they have hyponatremia, low low sodium also. Doctor, uh, very basic. I'll I'll say very basic thing which people have daily at home. You know that they when they fall down, they have an injury, a little swelling. Goes up. Yeah. So some people say that should we do cold uh, formation sponging or a hot sponging? Yes. What do you suggest? What is the right thing? Any acute trauma and any acute injury is we should give. As I rightly said, we have to first we have to immobilize the limb. Do not panic. Immobilize the limb. Then give the paracetamol and the cold cold sponging is very important. It's not. Because the, uh, the ice packs, which we have usually we have in the, our freeze, we can use that ice pack, and it is very helpful in the acute trauma. It's not hot. They always take ice. Ice packs are very important. Apply ice packs, immobilize the limb, take a paracetamol, and call for the help and leave the hospital to identify it is a fracture or not fracture, and it is as in an injury also identified. ये 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 एक बहुत कॉमन सिचुएशन है इसे वेरी वेरी कॉमन सिचुएशन व्हेन पीपल डोंट नो के व्हेन दे हैव अ इंजरी टू पुट अ आइस पैक और टू पुट अ हॉट पैक सो प्लीज रिमेंबर दैट इफ यू हैव अ इंजरी एंड यू हैव हैविंग अ पेन और अ स्वेलिंग ऑलवेज पुट अ 
ice pack or a cold pack and then you know you can go to a hospital or take whatever treatment is required also another very very commonly faced problem again especially more in the ladies also is that when they are cooking uh, at home they have minor cuts or maybe you know they burn their fingers or their hands while they are cooking so what and lot of people say koi kehta hai colgate laga lo koi kehta hai kuch laga lo so what do you think uh, is the right way to manage that uh, we are talking about thermal burns or you know chemical burns we have at home mm-hmm. especially while working at home so in that scenario first of all in such situation we must do the tap water running tap water uh, cooling whatever the the area of the body is involved we should put a suppose we have a finger burn or the hand burn we immediately start tap water cooling down that particular organ particular limb very important then if we have any uh, suppose we don't usually we don't have the you know ornaments at the home we don't have any particular medication at home so the right way is to just cooling down in whichever manner we have first you put the tap water tapped water you know running water in the area then can put the ice pack also that is the primary thing sir lot of the, lot of houses are nowadays we are very you know in a evolving phase people have to keep anti uh, on you know uh, ointment physical antibiotic ointment silver axe so a lot of things are available at home you can apply in that putting a coal uh, gate and these are the all you know not very helpful this is very important i wanted to hear that because people have a myth that yeah, this is a myth kuch, kuch, ha, kuch, uh-huh. if, you, if you burn your hand put coal gate people you know feel that you know this is what you know do very good and they don't have so they say at least something has to be applied so their psychological benefit they definitely may be psychological benefit with there So, and suppose doctor there is a cut and there is a bleeding then what do you suggest should be uh, done suppose there somebody had a knife cut or something like that it is a clean cut then immediately it is basically sharp cuts are very you know they look very superficial but they are very deep because they slash the area and then because the, the knife or any sharp object can give you the <coughs> very deep injury so in that scenario the moment and the the bleeding is very uh, very prominent and profuse bleeding so tight you know bending tight pressure and proper you know pressure bandage has to be applied a bandage is not available at a home every home so any clean cloth can be applied and tightly wrapped up around the injured area and report to the emergency this is very important you know because ye jo hota hai hath kat jata hai khana banate waqt ya kuch kaam karne waqt kanchi se kuch kaatte waqt which is i mean people do uh, very commonly at home and if there is a bleeding immediately put pressure on it tie up a clean handkerchief pe rumal leke band do ya koi kapda leke band do because normally people don't keep dressing at home of course we always advise a first aid kit should always be available but nahi hai koi baat nahi to you you know you apply and come to the hospital because It, these cuts are very clean wo upar se lagte bade superficial hai but they can be very deep so let a doctor decide ke whether any stitching is required or not and then uh, you know if nothing is required they will do a dressing otherwise they will do a stitching they will stitch the wound and you know uh, we uh, you can it get healed properly so this is these, these are very common things another very common thing which doctor i would like to ask you is about you know sometimes uh, some foreign body go in eye so and what do what should be done at that time i uh, i wash is very important sir because at home you don't have much uh, instrument or you know expertise to handle it immediately so better is the only way you have to wash i your regularly and just wash your eyes properly don't put any ointment don't put any anesthetic agent because they may harm because you don't know whether your cornea involved whether the sclera involved and you know we don't know about the what injury can the only thing is once you wash your eye properly with the cold water immediately rush to the emergency because the again is a golden hour concept in the uh, eye emergencies also this is cornea injury is you know can be taken care by the ophthalmologist only so or if there suppose somebody and some foreign body is there you not able to pick up from the particular that area then you have to rush to the emergency only. before coming emergency you just put your i properly wash 
No, this is this is very important. Anybody... Is very important. Sometimes you find you may saw your mirror and saw the red line in the you know uh, this is called subconjunctival hemorrhage. Subconjunctival hemorrhage redness in the eye, which is uh, near the uh, our this ball with the cornea iris. This is symptom, say, sign symptom of uh, increased blood pressure. The, the warning sign. Suppose somebody has the, or sometimes we rub eye very vigorously, that might have some congenital hemorrhage. So there's no, you should not panic about that. You go to the hospital, check your blood pressure, take advice, and come back to me. This is, this is very important for everyone, you know, that uh, because eye, eye may foreign body is a very common thing. Cooking, cooking at time, pe jata hai. you know, suppose some construction work is happening, some uh, particles of dust fall in your eye. So this is very important. Anybody would like to ask any question? Anyone? Doctor, uh, I was talking of listening to your pain between my net went off. So I was disconnected. Mm -hmm. uh, regarding the fall, I mean, basically most of the fall in elderly patients happen at the night. When normally they go to toilet, yes. and this has been experienced many times. Definitely. And at that time, somehow say there is nobody in the house, or even if uh, husband is there or some somebody there, they are also sleeping in a separate room or something. And uh, it has happened basically in one in one of the case that my uh, bhabi elder bhabi, she fell down in the night. She 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 got up to I mean take some water or or tea in the kitchen. And while going to her bedroom, she fell down and she became unconscious. Nobody, Nobody came to know. know. Nobody came to know. In the morning when her son got up, then only he, he found her and she was in coma already. I so know. the point is the point is basically that somehow when this sort of fall happens, unless and until if it is during daytime, it can be taken care of by that and then or sometime. In the night now. Even if, say, somebody is there, it is very, very difficult even to lift the patient for a person like, say, if husband, like elder, elder citizen like me and my wife are there, it is not possible at that time because the body becomes so heavy at that time, it is not even possible to even lift her and put her or move her. So the only alternative becomes that you have to basically call the ambulance and or call the help from, from outside. That may take some time, but that may take an hour or so. And that's a very crucial, very, very crucial time, basically. So how much time basically do you think can, I mean, help should be able, should be made available, especially if it happened in, in the in the night? The the importance of the uh, pre-hospital care. You're talking about pre-hospital care. That's so, right. Yeah. The pre-hospital care definitely we are improving day by day in our country. And it's not like uh, US and UK right now. But definitely we are improving day by day. So the, the first thing we have to understand why the person suddenly fall. How can we prevent all this happen to be happen? It may happen to anybody, any age group. It's not some elderly group or you may happen to uh, younger generation also. So point is that uh, the sudden thing which nobody can predict, nobody can help that time. So go better to go in that way. Uh, the we should re reduce the, uh, uh, the this incidences by pre very body health checkup regularly. So we have to understand: is there thing anything going on chronically that may lead to the disaster activity incident? So regular checkup, in the sense your cardiac evaluation or your blood test, that is very important. First of all, second thing: whenever you suppose uh, we are on bed and you want to go to the washroom. Person should not immediately get up from the bed. They should sit down 30 seconds. And after that, they go to the washroom. Because sometimes when the pulling of the blood goes to the, uh, the sudden, you know, sudden standing on the, you know, suppose you are sleeping in the, or you are just taking a nap, and you suddenly wake up of the washroom, going to the washroom, the blood, blood pressure goes down because the pulling of the vessels going to the legs and sudden drop in the blood pressure may lead to a sudden fall. One of the commonest reasons, especially persons who are taking anti medication like prostate alpha blockers or cardiac medication. So 
so one of the reason is a fall is that sir second most of the people have you know angiolitis the simple angiolitis they think that they some alprax or you know some kind of alprazolam trica or some kind of angiolitics they are more prone to have this giddiness some people take medication like ultraset you know like uh, tramadol tablet these are some medication also can lead to this kind of fall so we have to understand if it is a cardiac problem sir then it is a sudden problem then suppose somebody had uh, sudden onset of and they had cardiac arrhythmia sub ventricular arrhythmia then in that scenario the only the way is call your neighborhood and if you are alone then we have to intervene by the pre hospital care only so nowadays what we are doing in community also i would like to address dr uh, here also if we should promote all bls training in our neighborhood all the people young people and you know the people are very active socially also and intractable people we should learn how to do basic life support in emergency right in a minutes i am talking out about not our golden hours i am talking about the platinum minutes which is 3 to 5 minutes suppose somebody had a cardiac arrest and ambulance whatever the speed ambulance came and you know the you know the traffic of the delhi police uh, delhi ambulance reached within 15 minute 20 minutes but the first 3 minutes is very crucial for any cardiac arrest in that scenario if somebody your neighborhood know the how to do basic life support cardiac compression it may definitely make a difference so my suggestion we all the community which we live we should have a very very aggressive bls training programs in the community it may really make a difference so what you have said is very right but i would like to you know add one or two things in this because what happens is that uh, falls like what uh, mr gupta said it happens at night you know people who are senior people who are staying alone or maybe who are uh, you know was uh, staying without the children they should you know make certain arrangements in their house so that they have some physical support system like you know they have a proper support system when they go to the toilet so that they are able to catch hold of a you know support so that even if they going to fall they have something to catch hold of they should not feel feel uh, you know uh, that i am taking a support like a walker or something or any stick because sometimes people say why should we do it but this is very important this yeah, is yeah, preventing yeah, a fall yeah, absolutely right absolutely prevent right. Uh, uh, don't let water get collected in your toilet these are basic things ke agar pani zameen pe hoga to aap phisloge to make sure that this thing is done so these things are very very basic and should be you know everybody should keep in mind that have a proper support system have a have a have a handle to hold when you are in the toilet because that's way when you are supposed to go to toilet you sit down and you get up and suddenly you have a uh, fall in blood pressure and you fall down so have a support system so that when you get up you are able to hold something and and uh, prevent a fall so these are certain basic things which i would like to you know uh, beyond what dr uh, deepak has said that these things you know help in preventing a fall and uh, uh, and of course as far as time is concerned i would say go to the hospital as soon as possible is you can't wait for a few hours jaise lage jaise possible ho rush to a particular hospital what what i would like to add in that you are absolutely you are very nicely narrated that we need to, we should have a support system like you know you should have some uh, handles railings and most important avoid sleeping sleeping sleepers You are very careful about what slippers you are wearing. It's very important. So that is one of the most common reason and the fall. So anybody else would like to ask any question? Uh, yes, may I? Yes, please. Yeah, first of all, uh, doctors, thank you so much for uh, very valuable tips already. Extremely valuable. I'm, I have a near ninety-year-old elderly at home. we do take uh, some of the precautions that you advised already there's some confusion um her typically a diastolic is very high and systolic is not on the slightly on the lower side typically so i remember a situation where the diastolic was going quite high but the doctor was not uh, was saying it's not necessarily an emergency because the systolic is uh, low or normal is that something that you can confirm i'm talking about the difference between the systolic and diastolic pressure I mean, uh, 
Yes, and no, that's typically always the case in my elderly case. Just what could be an emergency? The suppose the diastolic is gone to one eighty, but systolic is still uh, fifty, sixty, or seventy. Would it be an emergency? Systolic is over the always the higher side. Diastolic is the lower side. My mistake. Okay, sorry. So, the other way around. Yeah. Ah, so you know, but we call the mean arterial pressure. There, there are a lot of reasons. There are a lot of medical condition where you find such gap. Is always there. Like suppose there are some valvular problems. They have the pulse pressure the higher side. Usually the pulse pressure you will always find 120, 80, 110, 70, you 140 by 70. You always find this kind of uh, readings in our BP instruments. So is there is any major major gap in the 180 or suppose 80? You found the the gap of the 100 or do not panic. Because there is some medical condition okay. which is addressed by only cardiologist, there is no need to panic about it. Okay. And the systolic has to be come down by 140, 130, depend upon the association medical problems. Suppose right. someone with diabetes targeted, but is your cardiologist said fix the target, your blood pressure should be around 130 or 140 or 110. It depends upon the associated disease or associated mm -hmm. problems. Got so there should not be panic about that the BP pressure is the, the pulse pressure, the difference between the systolic and diastolic very high. Right. It's, it's not, nothing to panic about it. Just to maintain the systolic pressure is less than whatever advice less than 140 and it's always better to have 120, 130 around. Okay, the age, there are multiple factors. Also. Right. So basically, what is to be done is not to panic, but mm -hmm. you know, consult your cardiologist. Yes, more. definitely. You have to panic. You can control that. Just uh, get consultation. Is right. To do about right now, and then do not stop your medication. It's not an emergency, but good to keep the doctor consulted. Yes. Yes, sir. Thank you so much. If I'm not sure what if it's a heart attack or not, is it still safe to give a sorbitrate under the tongue, or would it cause a, a harm if it's not a heart attack and I've already given that? Yes. Uh, I come to that point only. First of all, I initially started, I told that somebody, uh, suppose they have already cardiac problem, post PTA, uh, post PTC and cardiac bypass. And they know they have a cardiac problem, they are on medication like this pain and you know, like multiple medical problems. So in that scenario, taking a sorbitate is not a bad idea because if the everyone should have a BP machine at home, if someone pressure right. is around 110, 120, they can easily take sorbitate. There is no harm to take sorbitate, except sometimes sorbitate can lead to low pressure and headache. Headache yes. is a prominent symptom because it may lead to uh, headache. So headache is a, one of the major concern when you take sorbitate. So you can address the headache with the parastamol Right. right. So it's it's safe. It's not such a. Uh, uh, it's, it's safe in this. What, what you can do is check the blood pressure. If the blood pressure is normal range, take a sorbitate. Right. Right. Then you can avoid it. You should avoid it. So, around 90, 80, you should not take sorbitate in that Got it. Got it. That's very, very clear. Only if the BP is not on the, uh, uh, not in the, lower, not the side. lower side, uh, then take sorbitate. It's not. The only side effect is the headache. But headache is a good prognostic indicator. The medication is working. Working. All right. Okay, great. Thanks. Could there be something that a stroke that we've missed if there's a few days of this slight distortion of face and slight slurring of uh, um, speech, even though uh, the elderly has been recently a change in medication of uh, from benzo to, um, what do I call it, now to Seroquel uh, for her Alzheimer's. Uh, it could be coincidence of because of that, because I can see her that lessening, but I did see a bit of slurring and a bit of a slight distortion of face, which seems to be now going. Could it be, my question is, could it have been a stroke that we missed out in a fortnight back? There is always a possibility to miss out a stroke in any scenario. Suppose this is called farming effect. We say we have this problem because we have this gastric problem and my stomach is not good. And patient may lead to uh, acute cardiac attack. Similarly, okay. the patient who has this Parkinsonism or the, you know, some memory problem or some neurological deficit there, and they have some symptom which is similar to the primary disease which they are treating regularly. 
in that scenario we have that's why call patient or person may have two disease simultaneously so don't ignore that symptom please right. talk to your doctor neurologist or your primary physician primary doctor right at the, at your end it should be addressed properly at a time treatment should have there's no harm to take consultation there's no harm right. to do imaging there's no harm to do blood test right so all the better is called preventive care also so all okay. the better to have this so advising it, get it checked anyways no harm right in this case there's no harm sir thanks and last last <laughs> question this wonderful tip that you um, a wonderful actually idea that you came up with dr deepak that you know some sort of a life support if the local people had uh, been trained in is there any um, i mean if anybody knows of any online workshop or no, something this, this is not online sir this cannot be done <laughs> this has to be done <laughs> okay online yes. sir it is is a patient life so right right it cannot be online sir is there a chain that does that across cities yeah, you know, you know, mumbai okay, maybe you go sorry, sorry sir The best there are a lot of do, sorry carry on there are a lot of youtube uh, videos you can see how to do bls but ah, you need yes. a physical personal feeling of that how to do cpr right during the, you are waiting for the pre hospital care to arrive at your door steps so you right. must have this step because it may harm also you have to yes, identify to do the it right to the cardiac uh, compression right some my patient unconscious because of low sugar level and you start right. pumping the heart it oh may give the disastrous you know rib fracture or you know lot right. of trauma to the heart so it is that is little bit you know specialized mm -hmm. here but you can do bls training which is bls good training i think i think the best the best way it should be done is and it's a very important thing what you have uh, raised because you know it's for everybody in this society mm -hmm. to arrange a, a program where you call yeah. maybe one young person or somebody from every family and the youngsters yeah. will come with their uh bls training kit they have a kit where they give a hands on experience and training right. how to you know do it and it is very very important actually every society every family should at least one person should be there who should be you know so, uh, who knows how to do that if if i can't mobilize the community if i myself at least want to get trained so where do i go in a city like mumbai any 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 guidance any tips you are in mumbai so you send us we what we'll do is we'll uh, arrange that for you We we'll okay. try to arrange that for you. We we'll, we have some tie up hospitals and doctors in Mumbai, All and right. we'll see if that is possible. We'll definitely organize that for you. Okay, wonderful. Thank you so much, both of you. So grateful. Do carry on. Wait. I think this has been a very very interesting program. A lot of things have been said today. A lot of things have we have learned today, and a lot of uh, you know uh, uh, questions have come up which which we have uh, answered. Uh, just want to inform you that in case of any requirement, any help, you can contact our uh, care team, and they will, you know, if you need any more questions to be answered, we can connect you with Doctor uh, Deepak, and uh, the question will be answered. Again, as I said, in case of emergency, never waste time. Go to a hospital, and I said in the beginning very clearly, always keep a note of the nearest hospital. This is very very important. This is the golden rule you should always follow because where to go, when to go. and of course as we have said that if you need an ambulance you if you have a uh, please download our care for parents app and you have an access to uh, we have access to ambulance there's a button there and you can press and an ambulance can reach within less than 30 minutes and thank you everyone for joining and thank you lot of deepak it was really nice of you to you know spend time take out time from your emergency schedule which is the most as i said in the beginning the most important part of the hospital yes, it's my pleasure sir time. and uh, pleasure. thank you so much uh, i would like to thank our management vengadesh hospital and dr kera to give me opportunity to talk to you and it's a nice discussion and you know we we also improve whether your questions or we have a lot of idea behind it you know once you put some kind of questions we have to think of brainstorming ourselves also yes absolutely so thank you everyone thank you for joining and see you again next month on the last saturday we'll be coming up with some another interesting discussion and we'll inform you about the same thank you